everybody and welcome to another learn to digitize video my name is sue and i'm a hatch educator and today we're going to be working in creator hatch creator awesome program and i'm going to give you guys a little bit of a tour so when you start using the program you'll be able to jump right in and do everything that you want so let's start with the desktop this is what it looks like and it's super handy i absolutely love it I do have usually my resequence open and I'll show you what that's for is after and you can customize all your threads um, and work through pick all the ones that you want down here um, it's amazing I absolutely love it I have uh, three different kinds of threads and it's so handy to just have every thread color that I want but for this video we're gonna just have the uh, Wilcom colors down at the bottom they look pretty so let's go over the top now there's drop down menus these are icons these are of course very very important there your select and your reshape and you'll find you'll go off and go back to that and then these are twirl down menus now I find the twirl down menus are super handy they have everything you want in them and you know if you want to edit you go to edit you want to add artwork you go to artwork you want to add lettering you go to lettering and all you have to do is click right here and it'll show you everything that's available now we're going to go over everything let's go back to the icon so new is when you want a new file we already have one design one and it's nice and empty my designs over here I'll show you that is how you organize all of your designs and uh, hatch comes with a whole bunch and I think it's fantastic and it's all lovely organized here and you could do different things with it we'll go over that after it's pretty user friendly it'll search everything for you you can have a lot of features you can cut copy paste open open and recent you can view them differently you can group them and you can really organize your embroidery designs I absolutely love it I find it so helpful but for now let's do when you're done sorry for now let's go just click on design one and we'll get back to our usual desktop so new from template or new from design um, creates a new design based on an existing design so if you set up you know different ways you can uh, do it that way and that helps or just new you can open a design the shortcut for that is control zero um, if you don't use shortcuts you can just use the pretty icon you can open recent and what it'll do is save your most recent designs it's really helpful um, if you want to go back and work on something that's all you have to do you can insert a design so insert an existing embroidery design whether it's a working file EMB or a stitch file you can bring it in you can add artwork and you can save you can also print you can do a print preview that's what that is so and these are your keyboard functions cut copy and paste pretty handy to use undo and redo I use those all the time um, true view let's put some lettering out here so I wanted to do lettering sorry toolboxes I wanted to do lettering and I'm just gonna click on lettering and automatically all this super fun stuff is gonna open up for you so let's do some lettering so we have something to work with so digitizing I want capital no I actually want a capital made easy and I'm gonna put that on two lines and that's easy to do so I'm just going to go to the E and I'm gonna move it back because I want it centered and then hit enter and there we go so there's our lettering so now we have something to work with now I'm just pulling it out to make it bigger just so we can see now if you wanted to change colors you just click on the color once you have it selected and you can see my select tool is in use and once you have it selected you can just click and pick from one of your colors now let's pick something how about blue it's a blue day today and then we can see everything that we're doing so true view shows you the true view you know simulation of what your stitches will look like now you can see here it has all the codes these are stops and cuts and uh, you can see all the jump stitches but if you want a clean view of what you're doing 
click on TrueView. I tend to do the videos with TrueView on. In my working process, I switch back and forth between the two. So let's go show and you can highlight and there's sh nice shortcuts here. Show stitches, show shapes. You can show needle points. I don't often use that one, but it can be handy. You can show bitmap artwork. You can show the vector artwork. You can dim it, which just takes it down to 50% of brightness. So if you, if you want to see the stitches better, that's easy to do. Applique fabric, article and work area. So very cool. You can set up a hoop. You can right click on it and you can set up whatever hoop that you want. And if you do automatic centering, then the hoop, the, wherever you place it, the hoop will automatically center around it. Or you can do manual if you want to place two or three different things in a hoop. Um, and that's super handy. So that was a right click on there. You can also set up your grid. Um, I think I'm going to click that off so we don't have the hoop sitting there. You can right click on the grid and you can set up your grid, which is really cool. If you do snap to grid, that means everything. See how I have this in the middle of a square. If you do snap to grid, everything you put down is going to move to perfectly in that corner. If you like that, go ahead. Um, show rulers and guides. So these are rulers. And I'll show you what a guide is. If I was trying to line up two things, I just left click here. This is a guide and you can move them around. And all I did was left click on the ruler and they're super handy. If you want to line up two things, if I had a design that I wanted to be perfectly in line like this, that's what you would use the guides for. When you're done with the guides, you can just slide them up to the corner and off they go they're gone super handy you can if you don't want the grid i just click off and you see it's it's the same color as the background and you can still do guides and they show up a little bit better so let's place the guides again super easy that way but you can see them just a little bit better without the grid and i click twice just for fun so let's uh, get rid of these guys because we don't really need them and I'm left clicking and dragging to the center point and there we go that's perfect so again those are rulers if you don't want the rulers I find it handy because you can you know zero and zero is the center of the hoop and you can kind of gauge how big um, your design is and also how it'll fit in the hoop I tend to leave the rulers on. I'm just used to them. Um, panning is moving. See, the uh, cursor changes to a hand and I'm left clicking and I'm holding down and you can move your design around if you want. Let's get off that. Um, player is awesome. That is showing you how it's going to stitch out. Now you can speed it up by clicking here, just a left click and you can see exactly how. Now I'm gonna scroll on my mouse and I can move right in. And there you go and you can see how it's going. It's so beautiful to see your stitches going in and out. If you wanna see the actual stitches, you can change true view on and off while it's stitching out. And you can see absolutely everything that you need to do. Um, you can go back, it shows you the stitch count where it is. You can actually slide it back. If you wanna see that again, you can slide it back and forth to the point that you wanted. You can slow it down. Auto scroll means that, uh, and I have it on, so let's get over to the G. What it's going to do is it's going to pan over so you can still see what it's going on without having to click and center everything. We can speed that up a little bit and it's going to auto scroll for me. Beautiful, beautiful. There you go. That's what the auto scroll does. When you're done, click stop and it's done. Um, so the next thing up here is your zooming. Now I tend to zoom with my mouse, um, but this is super handy if you wanted to digitize or you wanted to look at 600% or a specific percent that you get used to or go back to 100. 
you know, even that is really nice. I just manually put the numbers in and I hit enter. So you can one to one is a super handy one um, in out. You can click this button and it'll fit your screen. So no matter what you have on your screen, it'll fit. That one is super handy. It has a shortcut of zero and I use that one all the time. You can also click on this one and see what my cursor looks like. And you can just make a bounding box and zoom into that and then go back to one to one or to fit to your screen. So super handy for everything. And that is the top part of everything. This is a uh, transfer if you want to send it to your machine. And these are all hoop functions. Now, right here are your measurements. I have it on US, but it is super handy to have it on um, millimeters too. You get a more of a precise measurement. If you have something selected, you notice that your measurement thing is all gone and a whole bunch of other tools come up. We'll go over those in a minute too. So click off, then you can change to metric and all of the rulers and everything you're doing and all the measurements in here will also change. You see right there, millimeters. So let's just put that back on US because I'm used to it. Background is awesome. There are so many options. If you want to change it to a solid color, you just click on here and pick your color. Color inside the hoop. So if you have a hoop up, you can have the outside of the hoop one color and the inside of the hoop another color. Factory article. I just love these. So you can pick from different items. So um, different color, two colors, three colors. And then you can pick your colors. Now let's just do one really quickly. Let's do a two color baseball shirt, long sleeves front. Color one will do something really obnoxious, pink and turquoise. That's bright enough. Let's go OK and zoom out and look. You can see what this is going to look like. How awesome is that? I, that looks like the back, not the front. So it just kind of gives you an idea. It's great for little mock-ups and different things that you want. It won't give you the exact size. You have to print out a template and do it that way. But how awesome is that? So let's go edit, undo. Oh, I moved it a couple times. So let's go back to background and let's go back to solid color. And so you can do, also do um, custom. If you have a custom background that you want, just a JPEG of material will do. Factory fabric, let's click on that. And you can pick different kinds of fabric. So let's pick a uh, stretch knit and you can also pick the fabric color. So let's go pale yellow and let's click OK. And look at how pretty that is. Now, if you zoom in, you can see there's actual texture on it. So if we make this smaller, because remember, we had it quite large for the front of a shirt. And then we go to, let's see, fit. Now you can see the background and it just gives you a really good idea of what you want to do. And I love it. I absolutely love it. So click off that to get back to our background. Um, you can do mess around, change your display colors. I tend to leave it just how it is. I'm just used to it, but you can change your grid lines and your guidelines so they show up better. It might be better to have the guidelines a different brighter color so you could see them better. Unsewn st stitches, object shapes, um, select objects when true view is off. So you can really play around in there and get your desktop to look exactly how you want. I love it. It's fun to play. So, okay, actually I wanted to take that off, didn't I? Let's go back to our standard solid color. That's a little bit boring compared to what we had before, isn't it? It just a little bit, but that's okay. Now let's click on this and let's look at our different options that we have. You can Duplicate, control D is the shortcut. You can delete it. The delete key on your keyboard will work as well. These are super handy. This is the position X and Y on it. I don't have it centered, but that's okay. Um, if you want to make changes, if you want this to be 20% uh, smaller, you type in that, hit enter. 
and it'll change the whole thing for you. And if you want a specific width, say you wanted this four inches, no matter what, it had to be four inches. You just put that number in, hit enter, and it's all done for you. And that will work on uh, just about any, uh, you know, digitized EMB object. So you can uh, even faster, you can size plus 10%, size minus 10%. So super easy if you just want to do it bigger and then smaller 10% or in 10% increments. That's a super handy way of doing what you want quickly. If you just want it to make to fit in the hoop, remember you have to click on what you're working on to have all these goodies come up. You can mirror, you can do mirror, that, that doesn't look right. So let's go back to, it's up here, undo. Let's do mirror this way. That doesn't look right, but there you go. You can rotate it left 15 degrees. How awesome is that just to do a quick editing? Uh, I absolutely love it. Undo. You can put in your percentage. You can skew your object, and skewing means it's going to stretch. So rotating, like we saw, will move everything. Let's do. Uh, let's let's be dramatic here, and let's do you know a 50% skew and see what it does. So you can you can play around with that quite easily. But that's what skewing is. It kind of stretches it, whereas rotating just kind of moves it. You can um, do automatic corners. You can add in trims. And you can change your underlay. And it's all here as well, fill effects and stitching. And there's lots to do with these. So let's uh, click here for the lettering. Fill, you can change it to tatami if that's what you want. You can change it to satin. You can say change it to 3D satin, which is really thick. And that means the M wouldn't work on that because, again, we have it a little bit small again. You can change it to an embossed tatami. Again, this is small, so it would be hard. So you can flip through here or you can go to more. And if you click on these little lines up here, you can bring it where you can see it. And that makes it a lot easier to look at. Now, if your lettering's big enough, these will show up well. My lettering's a bit small for that, so it looks interesting. I think it's interesting. You can't really see the pattern. I don't mind it. So blanket stitch, yeah, we knew that would be a mess on lettering, but it was fun anyway. So let's put it back to satin because that's what lettering looks better on. Um, effects, you can feather one side, and that's actually kind of cool for lettering. I don't mind that. Um, that kind of makes it kind of weird, but still not too bad, and side two. And if you don't want that, just click remove effect. You can also, if you notice down here, side one, max width, you can change everything you can change. And that actually looks a little bit better. That kind of looks like a, a scared kitty cat with its fur up. Um, right here on medium, I also like, if you look in the D, it's kind of short and long. This D is even better. I love it. So you can um, mess around with that. When you're done, you can do remove effect. Stitching is where we get all of our detail work. Now, the built-in fonts as well as the ESA fonts that you get from digitizing Made Easy, one of the main benefits to having fonts like that is that they are all set up. You should, in general, as long as you stick within the proper sizes, you shouldn't have to adjust anything. Um, they will stitch out wonderfully every time because all of this is already put in. However, if you want to change it, oh, also take note when you make it smaller or actually bigger, let me zoom out a little bit, scrolling with my mouse key. When you make it bigger, notice that Hatch is so smart and all the codes are put in that it's going to add a second layer of underlay. So really with the ESA fonts and the built-in fonts that you get with Hatch, they're, they're, I wouldn't say foolproof because you have to know how to hoop and do your embroidery properly, but it sure takes a lot of the guesswork out because Hatch is going to add everything. See, it just leaves it with the center run because this is really small and will make it really big and it adds it.
And that's one of the things that makes Hatch awesome. It's It does a lot. You have to do work, but it does a lot for you. And it sets up things in the proper way. However, it allows you to change stuff. If you want you know, more of an underlay, you can just click and you can change it. If you, if you don't want to leave the defaults on, you can change the stitch spacing. You can change the second underlay. So edge run means the underlay goes close to the edge and it gives you nice sharp embroidery. Um, when it's bigger, it puts on another underlay and this just is zigzag. And it gives your satin stitches a nice base to work on, and I love it. You can change the pull comp if you want. You can change the tie-ins. Um, right now I have mine off because my single needle machine doesn't do any trims or anything. But a tie-in is just to hold the thread. Um, tie-in after object, and you can do auto jump, and you can take that on or off depending on what you want for that. So that is a whole lot of options. Um, another thing you can do, corners are, I, I think it's very handy to leave the automatic corners on. So I'm going to put it back on because I like it. You can add in trims where you want as well and I think that's handy. So let's go fit it to our screen. Remember we're really big and let's look at what the reshape tool does. This is a super handy tool. This is the last one up here that we're going to work with. When you select an object. So I'm on my select button. I just click on it. You know you have it selected because I have a hot pink outline on everything. So I know what's selected. You could go to reshape and with the lettering anyways, you can do quite a bit. You can basically reshape it. So I'm going to make it a bit smaller, move it over. Let's make it a bit wider, I guess is what I'm doing. This diamond is a start point and this cross, red cross, is the end point and you can move them around depending on how you want it to stitch. However, there is a better way of doing that. Let's go back to select um, and you can, we haven't even talked about all the things you can do with that. Um, there is a better way and it's not here. Oh yes, there is a better way and you can just click one of these buttons if you want to change the direction that it stitches out. Left to right, center out if you're doing hatch, right to left if that's how you need it to stitch out. So always in hatch there's more than one way of doing it. I think also we should, while we're in fonts, we're going to hit fonts right here. But while we're in fonts, why don't we look at the whole thing? We, You saw where I typed it in right there. Let's talk about changing the font. Now I have so many fonts on this computer. I like it. I like the built-in fonts better because of all those things that I showed you. It sets up the underlay per size. Everything is all figured out and I love it. Now I have so many fonts and a really good way of running through the fonts. And again, I like the built-in ones. Um, I click on it and then you can do the up and down arrow keys. Now I still have it selected and I, I did it that way just so I could flip through all my beautiful fonts. And I find this is super helpful when you're trying to match a font to what you're doing. And I absolutely love doing this and I probably spend too much time doing it, but I think it's handy because uh, you can see everything and you can see immediately how it looks. Now, I love that one. That's the Cayman font. Um, it might be a little bit large. It hasn't split yet, but a little bit large. So now we've selected our font by flipping through. If you don't want to flip through, when you click on here, you can see the first word and you can see a basic outline of what you want. If you're working with John Deere's ESA fonts, this is your minimum and it's very important. If you don't know what size 
your font is specifically designed for. You'll have to look it up. The built-in fonts that come with Hatch, there's information in your manual and it's going to tell you the minimum and maximum. Maximum can generally be figured out by your split. If you're making something too large, your um, your satin is going to split, which means there's is kind of a little divot, kind of a little bump in it and that's your sign that it you're making it too large you can certainly do you know fonts that are you can take the split off but your machine may have a hard time stitching it out so i would suggest leaving the split on and that's your signal that you're making it too large but uh, small is another thing not all fonts are made to go small and with the ESA fonts, you have it right in the title, so you don't have to look anything up. It is an absolute, absolute lifesaver. I love it. Um, some of the things you can do here is that you can change the baseline with one click. And this is probably one of my favorite things to do. Let's make it one-on-one -on -one there. And all you have to do is click. And look, even two lines, it sets it up. Now, that's a bit steep of a curve, but let's try underneath. We have to pan a little bit. I like that as well. You can do this one as straight. We can do it long ways. And that actually set up quite well. I would probably use a different font for it. And there we go, back to normal. So that's normal. Lettering art. One of my favorite things to do, now these aren't all going to work because I have three letters. They're kind of made for one word. It works better, but you can do it. Look how nice that is. And if you go into reshape here, you can adjust it. You can adjust it if you want to make it wider. And it's instant when you adjust like that. Now you can't adjust the width or anything from resequence, but you can adjust how the effect works. Let's go back to select. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different shapes. And again, on this one, oh, that does look, look how perfect that is. That is so pretty. You can click on the more. And if there's two lines, if you left click and hold, you can bring it so you can see it just a little bit better. And you can see all of them. So it might help you pick out how you want your lettering art to look. And I love playing with these because uh, depending on the font, you can make an absolutely fantastic design just with lettering. Even that's cool. It's so perfectly set up. I, I kind of like the curves. I, that's just what I like. Um, and it goes very, very well with this font. If you don't like it, then you just click remove it and you're back again to what you wanted. So alignment as well. Remember I said at the beginning that I removed the space at the end because I had digitizing, space, made, space, easy. And I wanted the easy on the second line. If I had left that space in, it would be off. You see how it moved it? So if you're doing centering, make sure there's no spaces on the end or type it properly, not like I did. But you can change the alignment and the justification. Now I'm kind of missing a little bit here. And if you move your mouse, I'm not pressing anything. If you move your mouse and see how it changes, I can make this a little bit wider so you guys can see what I'm doing. I was missing that one. Um, and that will stretch everything out so it's a square. Not so hot when you only have easy as the bottom word. We can uh, left justify, justify it. Super easy just to do one or two clicks to make that happen. I love it. Centering, I almost always use that because I love it. Right justified and again the full justification. So let's put that back on centering because I like it. Now layouts is really cool too line one, line two, and line three. And just with a click, you can change it. Did I not have it selected? Oh, no, I have to make a circle. Whoops. So it's asking me for the circle, what it'll go around. And I'm just moving my mouse, and I'm going to left click. And if you want a perfect circle, don't touch anything, press enter. And automatically, it gets moved around in a circle. I absolutely love it. And when you go on to reshape, if you need to make any adjustments, 
See how that, I pull it in and pull it out and make the circle a different size and it'll move. And this is how you um, move them back and forth if you wanted it for some reason to start kind of on a slant. And then you can click on the easy and you can do it that way too. So this one, left click and drag and it moves it over. And you can also, we changed the first one. You can also change it just a little bit and that's going to spread the letters out. Isn't that fantastic? I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. So let's go to edit, undo, reshape. We got to go back just a little bit or we can do it up here or we can do the keyboard shortcut, which is, let's go back up here. I usually do it up here because I want to know what I'm doing, but it's control Z. So undo line layout. And there we go. Let's make it fit. The shortcut for that is zero. I use it a lot. You can do this one as line one, line two, straight across the middle and line three. And I think that's fantastic. So we talked about the letter sequence and that's uh, super handy if you're doing hats, you want them center out, but you can change with numbers, the width, the slant, which is kind of fun. It's kind of like the skew, but a little bit better. Um, I didn't change it very much now, did I? No, let's put it back to zero. Letter spacing, that's super handy too. If you want to mess around with that, you can just click and it brings the letters closer together. I liked it the way it was because it was set up perfectly. So we'll put that back to zero. And now we've gone through quite a few things that you can do with just lettering. Oh my goodness, I could play all day doing this, all day with lettering. Um, that's just how I am. But let's go to our toolboxes, which I think the toolboxes are probably one of the best parts of this whole entire program because it makes it so easy to use. If you want to do lettering or monogramming, you just click on that. You just click and everything that's available is right there. Now we did lettering and we went through everything. There's also monogramming, which is so fantastic and it's so easy to use. All you have to do, you have quite a few to choose from, um, different ways of setting it up, different lettering, different frame. You're bound to find something awesome. And if you don't like the frames, you can just click on the lettering. Now, that's probably not going to look the greatest, is it? Whoops, monogramming. What I should do, let's go to select so we don't get mixed up here. I'm going to delete this guy and we're going to do a monogramming that way. Now, letters are the different setups right here and change the font under advanced. You can, it's not open right now because I don't have anything. But let's click on capital D M E. So we have it in front of us. Um, why didn't that work? D you know what? That's my keyboard. I have such a terrible keyboard. D M E. And if you don't like that, now it has it in the background. Now, why doesn't my E show up? It's the keyboard, not hatch. Um, but it'll show you the different ways of doing it. And I love it. Let's get rid of the ABC. I just click on it, click delete. Look at that one. Isn't that fantastic? I, I love it. So we'll make sure we select that. Let's change it to a better color, a little bit darker. There, we can see it better. And you can just flip through. I just have three letters, DME, and you can flip through and decide which one you like. It's a very comprehensive um, monogram package. Uh, and I absolutely love working with it because look at all the selections and the ways you have of doing it. And then you have ornaments. Um, and you can add them in different ways. So when you move them around, like it's, it's absolutely brilliant and I'll, I'll go through it a little bit, but it's pretty user friendly to figure out how you want it. Check the desired positions. First position checked as an anchor ornament. Anchor is shown as highlighted. So you can go to add, 
from motif or from design to better depending on what you have now i don't have any um, very many designs on this computer so we're going to do it right here and if you want to see what you have to choose from look at all this zero one monogram ornaments monogram i have some set up so uh let's go to monogram ornaments and my goodness some of these are so beautiful you should be able to um set up a monogram so easily and differently each time to be exactly what you want so depending on how you want them to look that's what you click on see that is super cute like that that is super cute and all four corners and again click on the more and look you can make it big behind i have my letters really big so that one didn't work uh why don't we click and drag just to over here and you can just basically click through i like that one too one at the bottom two i like that too that one's cute too see how many and you know just click around and see what's going to work for you and if you don't like this then you can just pick another one i, I think it's fantastic if you want to do it manually a little bit differently look you can just click 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 and see how cute that is let's do them all one in the middle too Oh, I guess you can do one in the middle and no more. That's a lot. So let's pick this one, this one, this one, and this one. And the way I have it oriented is because of this. So layout, stitch, style, mirrors, duplicates, cycle. So we want it cycle. Um, you can change. There's so many things you can do to change. You can mirror it. You can mirror it up and down. You can change the numbers all you want. You can set a margin for it. There's so many things you can do. Um, fantastic. Fantastic. Again, I could play all day in this. So let's go to borders and it's the same thing. Add and you have a nice selection of borders. You have a drop down list borders and borders too. So depending on what you want, let's pick that one B213 and it's quite big and but I think it's cool. Now if you want to select just the one piece, you click there. It's grouped right now. Oh, because we're setting it up. We can change it after. Um, let's click on it. You can do different line types. Um, so if you want uh, bean stitch, triple run. If you want it filled, just click on the fill and you could do any kind now. Look at the emboss show up there. Isn't that fantastic? You can go to properties and if you want to change some different things, so the object properties, um, you can change it to motif if you want, embossed, all the information that we had up for from before is on there. So play with this. It's absolutely fantastic. I love it. Um, I'm going to... I guess you can't ungroup it because it's a monogram. I'm just used to doing so many things. So let's delete this then. There we go. So lettering went through reshape. Break apart. I'm just going to show you quickly. Let's do D. Let me do it differently. D, M, E. Okay, when I do it carefully, it works. Again, it's my keyboard, not Hatch. Let's make this bigger just before it splits. And we've gone through everything here. Let's go to break apart and handy your reshape is right there if you need to make any changes. Now, this is an alphabet file and they're all together so you can do all of these different things with it. But say you wanted to do it letter by letter, have it selected. And again, you can tell it's selected by the pink. You can do break apart. And if you notice, once I do it, now each letter is separate. If you wanted to do something, you know, different with it, I don't know. I'm just left clicking and dragging that didn't fall in with your monogramming perfectly. I don't know if you wanted to stack the E like that. That's how you would do that. That's break apart. And if you notice, they still act like uh, lettering. So if you have, you know, we had digitizing made easy written out before. The first break apart will break it apart into words. The second break apart that you do, you select on one of the words and it'll break it down to letters. 
And you can do one more break apart, select one of the letters, and you can break it apart into pieces. Now, if you notice, there's not an object type A on these ones. These are block stitches, and your E is now a part. If you wanted to make something, click on it again and rotate it if you wanted to make a, a groovy kind of E for some reason, that would be how you do it. Just if you need it down to the elements, that's how you do it. Now, another thing that's really cool is the knife tool. And it should be in another spot, but for lettering, this is how you do it. So select it, click on the knife tool, and look at your um, cursor changed to a little knife tip. And then you click and click and then hit enter and it doesn't really look like it did anything however when you deselect and you select again I cut off my D isn't oh I didn't want to do that let's do undo I cut off I cut apart my D now if you wanted to do split design split lettering let's go to lettering and we're going to carefully type Digit, whoops, can't do it like that. Tizing made easy. There we go, we have that back again. Now let's make it a little bit bigger again. So I click on it, left click and drag. If you wanted to do something really cool like this, take your knife and cut it. You know, let's do it right here, click again hit enter and it's going to take a minute to think about it because we have just pulled everything apart now i'm left clicking and dragging and i just want the top half of that and i didn't select them all i didn't make it so we're going to use the control key and click just on these top parts just on the top parts i have them all for this one now and change the color and wow, does that look cool. Now, you're going to have to go back for this one. Look at all these color changes. You really don't want that many color changes. So, uh, whoops, see, now I just clicked off, and you may think, oh, no, where it is? Where is it? Where is it? Let's go one-to-one, -one, or we can do fit. So what I would do is a control A, and then we're going to go to... customize design and we're going to go to optimize color changes and if you click on that it's going to bring it down from 28 color changes to three thank you very much does that not look so much better your objects are absolutely full because we chopped it apart but isn't that better i i think that's much better absolutely much better so that's part of the customized design things you can find out the design information um, just by clicking on it so if you want things about your design that's what you need to do and it gives you all the information and it gives you a little grade here too which i find completely enjoyable from your start point the fabric type, and we picked that at the beginning, and it tells you the stabilizers, one of my favorite things to do. And it gives you a summary. You can add in the author, tag, subject, and it'll make it easier when you go into My Designs to find your stuff. I love it. Background and display, same thing as up here. Auto fabric, let's click on that. Oh, this is one of my favorite things. If you want to change it, say you're doing it on, let's do something completely different, uh, stretch knit, it tells you what you should use. Cutaway times two. It also adjusts your underlay and your density to stitch out properly. So very important, this auto fabric. Auto start and end. If you want it, the machine to start in the middle and then start working, <laughs> an end in the middle that's the settings for that so let's cancel that stitch spacing um change the thread chart if you want to do that change design color if you want to change the whole design color 
Um, it's really easy to do. Insert design if you want to add another one in. Cycle used colors. Uh, cycles through the combinations of used colors so you can play around with that. Color wheel is awesome. Um, it, it will A color wheel helps you pick associated colors so you can really make beautiful colored designs like that. Optimize color changes. We went through that one and it was awesome. 28 color changes. Now down to three. That's what I like. So lettering and monogramming we've gone through. Artwork is what you're using in the background. So you can insert artwork. You can scan artwork and you can do dim artwork is handy. Lock artwork is super handy so you don't move it around. Um, those are all pretty self-explanatory. Auto digitizing, insert artwork for auto digitizing. If you have good enough auto digitizing, then this will work very well for you. If you have a particularly pixelated design, you might have a hard time. However, I will say I manually digitized, but I keep an open mind. I will say that Hatch has the best and most comprehensive um, auto digitizing that I've ever seen. I tend not to use it, but I spend hours digitizing designs too. If you have the right design, Hatch will do it the best out of any other program that I've ever used. So we can, uh, perhaps I'll do a whole video on what is good artwork and what you can use. So let's go to edit objects. Oh my goodness, there's so much we can do. We've gone over reshape, object properties, we've seen that. Um, you can click on one, you can remove overlaps. These aren't overlapped, so it's not really gonna work, but you select the two objects. We could actually make it work, I guess. My poor D is gonna look terrible though. Select two, remove overlaps, and give it a minute to work. And it might not work because it's satin stitches. It did not. But if you have two objects, then you can do overlaps. Um, let's see. Add stitch angles. Um, now, there's a lot of stitch angles in lettering, but let's zoom in here. Let's go to the top of our G because... Um, you can see some of the stitch angles on this G completely are a little bit of a mess. So you can add stitch angles to it. And all you do is click. Do I have it selected? Add stitch angles. Click and click. No, it's not going to do it. Oh, I know why it's not going to do it, because it's not a letter anymore. Aha! See, there's always a reason. If you remember, we cut everything apart, so it's it's not liking that. You can smooth shapes out. You can put in a, a number to smooth it out. Our shapes are pretty smooth, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, if I click on remove stitch angles, it removed all of them, so maybe that's what we needed to do. Add stitch angles, there's your stitch angle. I just I just wasn't doing it correctly. Um, if you put a point down and you don't want it, then you just hit the backspace. So let's do a stitch angle here and it's just a click and a click, a click and a click. And you just, uh, the only rule with stitch angles is that you can't cross them over. See this one? will not be happy and then hit enter and I made a mess because I crossed over so let's undo that don't cross over your stitch angles if you just want to move this one if it was anything other than letter I'm just left click on this and it shows you notice my pointer changes and it's going to show you that it's an angle and <coughs> If you notice the numbers, it tells you the angle. So that makes it even easier and way more fun to do. Um, create outlines and offsets. It's pretty easy to do. Now this will be a mess because I've cut it apart so much. If you want to do an outline, now an outline is going to follow your design 
outlining it. Super handy to do really quickly. We are doing it with uh, lettering, but you can do it with anything else. This is how you deal with the overlapping objects. So if you had overlapping objects, it's gonna outline each of them. And whatever is the bottom layer, uh, the top layer is gonna cover it. This one I tend to use the most. The intersection outlines will be welded. So it'll be all one outline. And then this one is the overlap portions of the outlines will be trimmed. So the top one will be fully outlined. If you notice this one, the top one isn't. Um, you can also do offsets. Now what offsets gonna do is it's similar to an outline, but it's gonna make it go further apart. And I love this effect. I absolutely love it. Now it's going to make a mess because of what we have, because I have everything so chopped apart <laughs> completely. Actually, what we could do it on, I didn't, I did though. <laughs> I was gonna say I didn't hack apart the easy, but you know what, I did. So let's uh, delete that. I just drew a bounding box around it and deleted it. We're, we're gonna come back to this. Let's go to lettering, let's go to lettering, and we're gonna go D, M, E. Just so we have something to work with. Click on it again to close it. Let's go to edit objects. Now we have it selected. I can see that, create outlines and offsets. So for the outline, we're gonna make that red. We're gonna do offsets, and we're gonna do four, and you can select the amount. And you can select the color. And why don't we do something like white so it'll stand out. And again, when you have multiple objects, you can select how you want it to look. For me, I want that one. Click OK and give it a minute to think about it. Now, this isn't the greatest, but it is too. You can see the outlines. It's a bit small is why I said it's not the greatest. Um, the outline is perfect, and these are our offsets. And I usually do more than one so I can see. If you look, the outer one is almost, you know, an oval rectangle with kind of curved corners. This one has a little more character. This one has a little more. I actually like it. So I'm going to delete this guy, and I'm going to click delete that guy, and I'm just using my mouse and keyboard. Now this one has a little more character, but this is what I want. This is what I like. If you want that filled in, click on fill, and then all you have to do is click, drag it up to the top, and it's underneath, and that looks fantastic. That's what I wanted. So that's how you do um, fills and outlines, and I, I absolutely love it. You have your tools here. You can stitch edit. Let me select something. Let me go to my select, select, zoom in just with my mouse. You can edit your stitches if that's what you want to do. I don't, so let's go to select. I, I've never actually used that. Layout is super fantastic. We're just going to quickly go through this. You'll be able to do a lot of playing playing around with it. I am also going to click here and I'm going to delete my outline. So we just have DME. I am, however, going to make it a little bit bigger. So we have something to work with and I'm going to zoom out just with my mouse key or I could use up here if you wanted. And we're going to click on mirror copy horizontal and I'm using my mouse and I'm moving it and you can see how the letter changes and it's doing exactly what it says mirror and copy horizontal let's go to mirror copy vertical and the line is you know where my mouse is and you can change around look at that I love that mirror copy both I will have to zoom out a little bit so you can see and that is a really cool way of, you know, doing more objects and you can move it around one side to another. I, I could play with this all day. Uh, circle layout is probably my favorite thing to do. So my mouse is the center of it. And depending on how you move it, you get a whole different look. So I'm moving it over to the right, over to the left. I can move it up down we can create this kind of a shape it'd be really easy to make a really pretty design super quickly and if you have them overlapping hatch will merge them for you so again i could play with this forever 
let's go back to our select key. So that was layout. Uh, Multi-hooping is really handy um, and it works brilliant, brilliantly. It's pretty self-explanatory and it will uh, help you plot out your multi-hooping and it works. Um, a lot of people do it. I have huge hoops on my machine, so I haven't. Uh, maybe I'll do, if you guys want, I can do a whole video on uh, multi-hooping because it's handy. And these are all the tools with the multi-hooping. Uh, super awesome. Use it if you need to. Um, outputting your design, which means sending it to your machine. You can transfer, you can print it, you can print the design, you can capture the design image, and that just you know, takes a JPEG basically of your design like this. Super handy if you put a background, if you make a really cool background for it, that's brilliant. So that is your introduction to uh, Hatch and all the things that you can do inside Hatch Creator. And you can see there's a lot of things to do. There's so many things you can play with. I encourage everyone just to get used to the program to actually do that play around just like I did. Um, and you'll get familiar with the program really quickly and you will find it really enjoyable. So thanks everyone for watching. Welcome to Hatch. Welcome to Hatch Creator. I hope you enjoyed this video and happy digitizing everyone. Thank you.